Hello, hello. Uh, this is the great Johannes speaking, Johannes Mattis Conrad. Uh, sometimes I do brainstorm sessions where I just think about, you know, what are the options for our people? What can we do? What, what, what might we get away with doing? You know, so today I sent out a newsletter titled uh, White People, the Most Hated Minority. And I suppose I'll just start reading it and then let my thoughts flow about, you know, what I thought of this morning. Uh, <clears throat> so white Europeans and their colonial descendants have always been a minority throughout history. Even at the heyday of the colonial age, we were no more than 50 percent, not even 50 percent of the human population. And depending on the definition of quote unquote white, our people today make up just about 8 to 12 percent of the global population. However, only about 2 percent of the global population is now a fertile white woman, meaning aged 15 to 40, who might still have white children. Uh, someone asks that I should start an organization of some sort. Yeah, of course. But numbers, numbers aren't everything. A small group of intelligent people may be able to solve problems that billions of less intelligent people never will, not on their own, not without teachers. You know, the Europeans kickstarted the Industrial Revolution, but they did so without anybody teaching them how to do it. They came up with it on their own. And it was kickstarted by the English and the Germans at first, and then, of course, perfected even more by the Americans. And Europe, then, at the start of the Industrial Age, counted no more than about 100 million inhabitants. Today, Europe feeds over 740 million people. That is the entire continent, right? So around the year 1000 AD, Europe only had about 36 million people on the entire continent, which is less than the state of California houses today. Now, I argue that our problems are not necessarily numerical. Though we may lose our cities to mass immigration, made possible by the very industrial age that white people spearheaded, at least, you know, that is, after all, the reason why we are able to house millions of millions of people in such small, close quarters. Uh, despite all that, we will not lose ourselves. We, we may, in fact, end up better off if we decide to leave the cities. The European industrial age caused deep feelings of envy among the other races of people. All of a sudden, Europe came to their, Europeans came to their lands looking for resources. Now different people responded differently. The Asiatics began studying Western technological advances and eventually mastered the art of industry and high tech. You know, the Chinese, for example, today, they are very advanced in terms of technology. And, uh, you know, they did their, they did their work. You know, we, in the past, we used to accuse the Chinese of always copying Western, uh, Western goods, Western technology, stealing our patents. But nowadays, it's the other way around. Now it's the Chinese patenting more than anyone else. However, some other races of people will still, still wallow in envious misery, saying that Europeans stole everything because they didn't make anything. But know that one cannot reason with envy. Envious people cannot be re-educated. Their emotions override all logic. They come to Europe to take back what was stolen, despite never having invented anything on their own. It implies that certain races of people love using the finished goods produced by Westerners and nowadays also by the Asians, but will never learn how to produce them themselves. Case in point, Nigeria's recent discovery of $100 billion worth of lithium for batteries, instead of investing in mining skills, the Nigerian leadership simply sold the mining contracts to an Australian firm. Perhaps such leaders know that their people at home are lacking in certain competencies that might also never be kindled by education either. Uh, this is quite shocking, right? Nigeria is the largest country in, uh, in Africa in terms of population. They have over 220 million people living there now. You know, that's two thirds of the US population. And they're unable to do their own mining. Why not? Because in the past 100 years, they did not invest in education of their people, or meaning to build up their local native industry. 
they still don't have their industrial revolution. Basically, what they have was passed on to them by the Europeans and donated to them by the Chinese, right? And then they complain that Europeans still so supposedly uh, you know, exploit Nigerian resources, but their leaders sell those resources to Westerners and to Asian companies. But still, Europe's aging population cannot be maintained without bankrupting the economy. The idea that immigrants could act as the replacement children that we didn't have is also false. Immigrants are not interested in paying white pensioners their pension money. More likely, a turning point will come when old white people who can't run so fast are going to be killed off in the streets in broad daylight by the very migrants they voted in. When we prepare now for the possibility of such atrocities later, our resolve becomes all the more clear. We must bring our young families to safety on lands that we can defend and where we can continue to thrive. This means cutting loose from the dying urban zones, but not from industry. We're not Luddites who shun technology. Rather, we will use any technology available to us to secure our existence. First, we retreat young families from the urban zones to the suburbs and then further on to the countryside, away from the cities. But for a while, as in South, South Africa, as we can see there, non-white urban-centric leadership will make our lives miserable and state-funded armies or militias may hunt down and kill our families regularly as they do with the Afrikaner Boers in South Africa. Next, we prepare for a jump as Western industries cannot and will not be, be maintained by people who were never able to kickstart an industrial revolution in their own countries, our people must work in secrecy to kill off the cities. Through, their control, through our control of the land, we must sabotage and starve the urban centers, or at least reduce their numbers. White male militiamen or guerrillas must work around the clock to both defend their people and sabotage the cities. The industrial miracle has simply attracted the bloodlust of envious people and we cannot restore the balance until we root out the source of their envy, luxury goods. Basically, I'm arguing against materialism and the guerrilla aims to destroy the supply chains that produce luxury goods and thereby remove the object of four men's jealousy. This is also the point of a book uh, called uh, The Forest Passage by Ernst Jünger. Though we must have more children, numbers alone cannot lead to victory. This isn't a numbers game. From the zombie movies, we have already learned that well-armed, intelligent groups of people with the right skills may outrun a million zombies and find safety. By keeping our numbers manageable, rather than letting our numbers swell uncontrollably, uh, uncontrollably we shall be more flexible and more likely to survive. The world is going to change for the better. We, white European types, wherever we live around the world, are going to find out that it is better to have 50 million of us who can survive anywhere than to have a billion of us who can survive nowhere at all. So that was my, <laughs> that was my speech as an introductory. So this is basically a thought process, like uh, what you call it, uh, a brainstorm session where I'm just trying to figure out Okay, what can we do? What is possible for us to do? And what can we do next, right? Uh, someone asks, uh, hello, what do you think Hungarian language? What do you think of Hungarian language and this about his, her difficulties? Oh, you mean like the gender, uh, the gender language thing? Uh, I think the issue is more that in, in languages like in Dutch and German, they want to erase words like boy and girl. So you can't say boy, you have to say pupil. You can't say girl, you have to say person or child person or something. I think that's what they're trying to do. Johannes, in this scenario, is the mass influx of urbanites into rural areas really sustainable? Well, that's not going to happen. You see, they're going to starve. The, the cities cannot be maintained in the long term. You know, uh, Someone asks if I always go live every day at 6. No, I usually go live sometime between 7 and 8 p.m. in my time zone, Western Europe. I think it's CET plus two now, I'm not sure. And uh, so you just have to catch me. I don't have a fixed program and I don't always do it, but I try to do it every day now. 
Yeah, especially in a small country like the Netherlands. Well, the Netherlands is a giant city, really. It has some pockets of, of nature left here and there. Uh, I think my point is that in the future, there won't, there won't be 17 and a half million people living in the Netherlands, but say rather 5 million. And with the others, they simply won't make it. You know, it's not like this can continue forever. Everybody understands that the, the you know, increasing growth of human population either means that we turn the entire world into a giant city with skyscrapers everywhere, right, blotting out the sun. Um, or, or we fight back against the urban industrial complex itself and simply attack the supply lines and, and the, you know, and the, and the energy pipelines and so on that feed into these massive cities and the urban zones. And then that way we also save the climate anyway, basically, uh, maybe you can call me an eco fascist or something like that. Uh, I think in my personal view that I've things that I've been thinking of for the past many years is that I really do not support any continued urbanization or industrialization, namely with the purpose or the intent or the side effect of increasing the human population any further, say into the hundred billion on, on, on earth or a trillion or a hundred trillion. There are madmen who want that. They want to turn the planet earth into a sort of hu uh, human termite colony. And I rather feel that human beings should live, if we're making a comparison with termites, we should be less, be as lions. But there are not as many lions as there are termites. So maybe it's also possible that humanity will split into, into two kinds of people, the sort of Amish, Mormon type of people and the, and the Mennonites versus the urban atheistic communists. But then it is very important that these urban people no longer have a say over the lives of those living outside of the city, meaning the political system will have to be split between urban and non-urban. And basically the urban people, in my view, then they will have to be locked up. We will have to build a moat around every big city, a big wall around it, keep people in to lock them in. You know, what do you think about Asia? Uh, I don't see China as an immediate threat. I think China just wants to, has more psychological goals, like the Chinese leadership, Xi Jinping, they speak about the, the century of humiliation from 1850 to 1950, when China lost every war against the West. And that is what they want. They want to either, I think what they really want is to, um, you know, poison the West a little bit <clears throat> to weaken the Western people so that we are physically incapable of future acts of colonialism, probably something like that. So we keep, we keep into, we keep into account that the Chinese have their own goals for us, their own intentions for us, and they are not entirely positive. They're also negative. And, and our goal in the West then would be uh, to avoid any kind of necessary submission to a Chinese led world order. Uh, our people should not have to submit to that. We are simply going to make a stand some way in some form where we can remain independent from, uh, from any kind of Chinese influence, you know? Do you think China will expand? I think Chinese uh, technology will expand to the point where they become technologically dominant, but that does not mean that uh, Europeans or Americans are going to start listening to the Chinese. That will likely not happen. Though there may be a definite uh, age of turmoil ahead when the American power or credibility rather does wane, and but no one is going to submit to China. The, the white people are not going to listen to China. Uh, they may come up with their own version of the rules-based order, but we're not, we don't even like the, the one we have in the West. We're not going to listen to this. Like I said, there's really going to be that massive distinction between uh, urbanites and everyone else. Urbanites and rural guerrilla, so to speak. You are right, this level of luxury certainly cannot be maintained. No, especially not if you realize that, say, one or two billion uh, Central Africans are going to come online. They all want the stuff we had. They all want cars. Impossible. They can't all have cars. What else do they want? They want, you know, the luxury housing. They have to build those in Africa because Europe is already overcrowded. So uh, the, the demand from the Central African for, for luxury is so extreme. Uh, it is insatiable. And we're going to have to accept that. Uh, we may need to start sabotaging certain supply lines in order to prevent the world from dying, really. Uh, let me see. Did you see the video of crowds of Kurdish people dancing in Japan in hijabs? That's weird. Why did they do that? You know, send them back, you know. 
they're trying to push diversity there as well in Japan, right? So Japan is a bit harder, yeah. Uh, they have an island, yeah. The Belt and Road Project is definitely going to make China very powerful, but how long will it take before the Africans understand that they are being colonized again? You know, they always, they're still angry at the Europeans, even though Europeans gave them everything they have, you know, electricity, technology, whatever, infrastructure. The, the Europeans left behind a useful infrastructure. But now the Chinese are doing the same thing. And the Africans don't really quite get that. The Chinese are actually colonizing them right as we speak right now. You know? Is there going to be a social credit system in the Western world? I hope not. You know... Whenever they start doing these digital things, keep in mind that you can, like the Amish, simply cut off. You can cut loose, but, but you need land. If there's land that you can protect and defend, then you can break out of all these digital systems. You won't need them, right? Basically, in, in effect, you can force the digital people to accept your paper cash again if they want to trade with you if, or if they need to trade with you. You know, you need to make it so, strategically speaking, put yourself in a position where people will have to deal with you and will have to allow you to exist, you know. Stay on top. I think in a few, in a few years, Africa will gain some new generation of leaders and it's going to be entertaining. I wonder, I wonder. When they realize that their own present leaders are, you know, throwing their... Uh, their wealth away at Western corporations, they might want to revolt against their own leadership, yeah. But they're not smart enough to realize it, yeah? You've seen it firsthand. I saw a documentary called, what was it called? The Empire of Dust. It's an excellent documentary. I think it is available for free on YouTube or something. The Empire of Dust. And it shows you the Chinese presence in Eastern Africa. They deal with the Kenyans and the others and so on. And, and you see the distinction between the black workers, the Chinese uh, managers, right? Uh, it's very interesting to see how the black workers really are not very smart. The documentary exposes them as like, you know, a bit helpless, helpless people. And, the, and you, there's a scene in that documentary where the Asian, the Asian managers, they look at those black men and they're, they're, they're sitting in their car, right? And they, they talk to each other like, we are above them. They literally, the Chinese literally said that, feel that they are above these Africans because they are more skilled, better organized, right? And that's just, that's just true. So go, definitely go watch that documentary, uh, The Empire of Dust. Empire of Dust. Yeah. In South Africa, the ANC were allegedly their saviors. Now they think it's Putin. Yeah, that's funny. Right, right. They, they, they think that the United Nations or the EU or now it's Putin or it's Xi. You know, they always think there's some kind of savior out there for them, right? And now they think it's the communists. The communists and their, uh, their Marxist leaders behind the curtains, right? Because the ANC obviously is not really being led by, by the black people of South Africa. There's paler skinned people with certain financial interests behind all that, right? I think in Africa, in South Africa, you have like five or six million white people and 55 million black people. Clearly the billionaires, the white billionaires, or let's say the paler skinned billionaires, they want to tap into that big black market. They want to upgrade them and make sure that they can spend a ton of cash and money on on the, on the services there. But then, uh, but then again, that that means the whole the whole thing, the whole system is also just one giant scam, you know. Rhodesia forever, yeah. So Africa needs to go through a selection. The smart lie, the smart lives, and the dumb goes away. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if that's possible, and I don't know if we actually did. We have something like that in Europe. You think that maybe say, in the heathen times, say that our people were, were really dumb and that we somehow got smarter in the past 500 or 1,000 years, that simply the dumb ones among our, our people simply died out. I don't know. I, I, I don't, there's no way to test because we never did IQ tests in the year 500 AD. But um, who knows? Maybe such things are possible that in, in Africa, you'll see that you have a very large population with the hunter-gatherer mindset who cannot succeed in the, in the organized society. So they either overthrow the organized society or, you know, or they filter out, or they evolve, yeah? Africa has no leader, no ideology. For now, it's hopeless, yeah? Yeah, that's weird, huh? 
this is in that documentary as well. There's a scene where the Chinese guy scolds a black man for, hey, the Europeans, when they, when they left, they, gave, they left you railroads, uh, electricity grids, trains, and you all let it go to waste. They literally, you know, if, if you try to build a, an electric grid in certain parts of Africa, the next day your copper coils will be stolen and they will be sold on the market for alcohol. <laughs> this is all in the documentary, you know. Yeah, I'll definitely watch that, yeah. Are the Jewish the leaders of the world? Well, no, not the whole world, no. But I think they are... This, the distinction, I think, that is absolutely true is that like the white people, the non-Jewish white people, are much better at interacting with the physical world. So we're better at inventing uh, machines and, and, and planes and, and things like technology, basically. We are inventors of technology. Whereas the Jewish people, in my view, are better at leading organizations of people. Right, so they're they're better at dealing with people, but that that does give them an edge in leadership positions. So you you just have to be aware of it, that um, you know white white men's technical skills I think are superior, but then in terms of leadership, it's rarer for us to be good leaders. Uh, but that doesn't mean we don't have leaders. Right, we obviously do have very good non-Jewish leaders out there. They just need to make it their responsibility. To take over and to make sure that we are on the right track in our own in our own benefit in our own interest so to speak uh, some continents have time delays yeah in some way i suppose a couple of centuries of a delay i mean uh, yeah it gets stolen yeah you build some infrastructure and then and then they just dismantle the infrastructure to sell it on the on the on the market for <laughs> to get drunk yeah you know, that's not a way, if you have that kind of hunter-gatherer mentality, you can't, you can't succeed uh, in, in a competition with, with China or Europe or, or the USA. It just won't work. You know, I would like to know your thoughts on the history of Europe as Romanic and Germanic. How is it today? And how the variant disaster is a European cornerstone. Yeah, yeah so the... The Western historians, they call European civilization Christian or something, right? Or, uh, But foreign uh, historians looking at Europe, they call it the Germanic-Roman civilization because the Germanic peoples of the north, roughly, and the Romance peoples of the south, roughly, together shaped uh, European history for a very long time. And I think in my book, Revival of the West, I, I write about this. The Varian disaster, that is the Battle of the Teutoburg Forest, uh, allegedly took place in the year 9 AD in September. You know, they don't they claim to know these details. The, the, the Romans, some Greeks and some others wrote about this event. Tacitus, for example, claims to have visited these lands just about a century after the event. And they, he said that people were, were still singing of their their hero, the leader Thor which was likely Arminius. So it's interesting that they equate Arminius with Thor. But the thing is, okay, why did the Battle of the Teutoburg Forest even happen at all? Um, so imagine you have the Roman Empire 2,000 years, years ago or so, and your, the Roman Empire is expanding. They constantly need to feed the city of Rome with long supply lines, carts full of uh, stuff, carts full of goods are brought into the city, and at night, the empty carts now full of manure and, and trash basically move out, move out of town. And so Rome is expanding and they need, they are in dire need of fertile agricultural land. And they find this, it turns out that in Western Germany, in the province of North Rhine-Westphalia, today still has the most fertile agricultural, agricultural soil in uh, Europe, if not in the world. And so the Romans are eyeing this. What it also suggests is that the Germanic peoples were not primitive at all. They knew or understood the importance of their territory. They knew that it was very fertile. They must have had a lot of people there, a lot more than we think. Right? Not hundreds of thousands, but millions of Germanic peoples were living just in that area alone because it was so fertile. right? And so the Romans come in. They try to either deal with the Germanics by making trades. So you have the, the progressive Germanic camp who are trying to get deals out of the Romans. And then you have the traditionalist Ro Germanic camp who want nothing to do with these Romans, who want to destroy the Roman Empire. And that is the party of Arminius. And so at some point, uh, allegedly it goes like this. 
there were some German mercenaries in the Roman Empire, and Arminius himself once also uh, in the Roman Empire, where he in the Roman armies, he he became an equestrian, he became like a lesser noble even, he he received some uh, Roman ranks, and Arminius then switched his sides. But mind you, he was just 23 years old. So he was working for the Romans as a mercenary, basically. And by the time he's like 23 years old, or somewhat, something like that, 23 or 25 years old, no, 25 years old, he leads the Battle of the Teutoburg Forest. So the story goes by leading, um, first of all, these Germanic mercenaries in the Roman Empire and, how, getting, and using them as a way to trap the Romans. And, and over the course of several days, they slaughter uh, three Roman legions and in total like 20,000 Roman soldiers and so on uh, and they're just murdered off like they don't no survivors maybe one survivor to return home to tell the story but other than that and it is said that General Varus committed suicide while his officers and while his men were still fighting for their survival uh, and that changed history because that ended you know, the Battle of the Teutoburg Forest ended the expansion of the Roman Empire northward. And basically, it is it had reasserted or, yeah, it, oh, what's going on here? I got a, I got a message on my screen that says that I'm, I'm not talking about this is weird because uh, they, they say I was showing reproduced content, but I wasn't. I was not showing any kind of reproduced content. And now my visibility is restricted. That's weird because it doesn't make sense. Appeal approved. Okay, I won the appeal. <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> well, that's TikTok. At least on TikTok, your appeals are approved. You win the appeals all of the time. Uh, uh, on YouTube, no chance. You get three appeals and you're out and you get no... Uh, you know, are uh, you still see and hear me? Okay, good done. Well, then I just want to go on. Go on. Uh, yeah, you can go on to uh, uh, Amazon, and there's this book called Revival of the West by my last name Conrad. Uh, you'll find it there. I, I, I write about the whole thing. But you know, the Germanic peoples they stop the expansion of the Roman Empire northward, right? And uh, as a consequence, everything changes. Because it called later in history, there's a, a rift between the Protestants and the Catholics, which is really the same thing again as the Germanics and the Romance peoples. And it is these Protestants then who, uh, on their sailboats now, manage to sail all the way to the to the Americas and so on and so forth. So it really kickstarted modern civilization, the the Germanic assertion. Maybe we need something like that today, where our people assert themselves against now not not necessarily the Roman Empire, but the woke empire, right? The woke, uh, but more than that, the woke and of course, the enemies outside of Europe. I need a little sip. <clears throat> The series, yeah. The series by Barian was, was also inspiring. Yeah. Johannes, do you think Africa needs cleansing? Do you think it will need to get as bloody, bloody as assassination? Well, they need a change of their leadership. I prefer the Nigerians to stay in Nigeria, but that's only possible if they build their own industry, right? And then their leadership needs to stop selling the resources to Australian mining companies and so on. You know, if that means that in the West we won't have as many Tesla cars, then so be it. I'd rather have them there in Africa than that they have to always keep coming to us. I really want to do something about, uh, you know, the mass immigration coming to the West. It's just not right. Yeah. Uh, in your vision of Europe, if your vision of Europe was realized and you're its emperor, <laughs> what would you do with Africa and Latin America? Latin America, you can just leave them alone. What, what do you want to do with it? It is a very isolated place in the world. You know, they can't really do much. I just want to end the mass immigrations into Europe. This cannot go on forever. We have a right you know, as white European type people, we have a right to have some place on earth where we can live. I say it is definitely in Europe. That's where we're from. That's where we belong. So that no one can say to us that we should go home. We are home in Europe. So that's where we will have to make a stand and defend ourselves. There's just no other way, you know. Yeah. 
a, mo a modern Teutoburg battle is, is coming. Yeah, I believe so too. Yeah. So, but what about, uh, but without them, Europe will not survive. Yeah, no, true. Well, fine then, you know, either they take care of themselves or we aren't going to do it anymore. This is what they used to call the, uh, uh, the white man's burden, right? Where white men were, uh, were always trying to educate the other races and getting them onto our level. Uh, we don't need to do that anymore. Wherever those ideas come from, we need to end those ideas. Maybe that's always been like the left wing of our people, right? There's always been these soft left wing people who want to help the world and heal the world and make the world a better place, you know? They don't know what they're talking about. They've really, they really messed things up. You know, if you, do, if you, dislike, if you dislike the inequality of this or that group of people, you know, deal with it. Nature is like that, you know? Uh, white people have small numbers. We only have like uh, a billion at most, probably 800 million people. And then there's 7 billion other people. So we're, my, we're the minority now. We've, we've always been the minority. And so, you know, we have to secure our survival through our technological prowess and not, not so much through our numbers. We're not, we're, there's no way that in any foreseeable future, white people are gonna have like 10 billion children. That's just not gonna happen. We're gonna have to survive as a global minority, and that's fine, as long as, that's why after all, we live in the colder regions. We live in Europe, Europe is cold in the winter, right? Let's keep it cold. Let's keep our habitat cold and keep it ours. You know, it's really not that, of a, that big of a problem, you know? Uh. Europeans who build cities do not benefit you know, by importing people who build mud huts. Yeah. Right, but the cities we built, like New York City, that's not a nice place to be. When I think of, when I think of cities in the USA that are nice, you're, you're thinking of Charlestown or something like that, like that right? Uh, and of course, many European cities are no longer nice either. You know, Paris and London, especially the suburban areas there, they're, they're not nice. The, what is nice is a small town with, say, 20,000 people and tons of fresh air and nature and, and fresh water streams uh, nearby. Yeah. yeah, many, many white people have tried to come back to Europe, but they are being asked for documents. Yeah, you can't. That is what I would allow if I would rule Europe. I would allow our people to come back to Europe so that, you know, so that we don't need to rely on other kinds of immigrants, you know. It's just not right, you know. The, the, there are, of course, there are people who fantasize about a lot of things. I don't know how and when or why it became fashionable to promote you know, the, the racial miscegenation of people in Europe, that we all have to mix with Africans and Asians. And they, they think the argument, I think the argument they always give is that, well, if all people are, are the same, then there will be no more war. No, that's just a mental fiction. Of course, there will be war. There will be people living in this side of town and there will be people living on the other side of town. And even if they look the same and speak the same language, they can still go to war, you know, <laughs> simply because they live in different places. You'll still have war. You know, there will be, say you have exactly the same brown people in Germany and exactly the same brown people in France, and the same religion, same language, everything the same. They will still go to war because Germany has more fertile agricultural lands and France's, France's lands are less fertile. So there's going to be a war over who gets to have the better fertile lands, the greener, the grass is always greener on the neighbor's side, right? I mean, this is not going to go away. In 1900, ethnic Europeans and their diaspora made up 34% of the world's population. Yeah, that's, ma that's amazing. It's probably 8 or 9% today. Huh? But this doesn't bother me. Our numbers still increased despite going from 34% to 8%. Our total number still increased. This is not a numbers game. I mean, what do you, what do you want to be? Do you want to be a lion or a rabbit? Do you want to be a lion or ants or termites? All right? I think it's better to be lions, but then we will have smaller numbers. And the brother wars were very destructive, yeah. We don't need those anymore, no. No, numbers are not important because it doesn't matter. In, uh, you know, in the year 1000 AD, there were only 36 million Europeans alive in Europe and we were fine. We then started the industrial age and the colonial age and the space age and the technology age. We did all those things coming from very small numbers. So the numbers are, don't matter. What matters is that you have the intelligence and the leadership. You know, uh, upper classes are always very small. 
you can assume that in the United States, no more than 20,000 families are the upper class elite who rule the whole USA, right? They, they succeed because their numbers are small. You know, if the upper classes had as many people as the lower classes, they wouldn't be the upper class. They would also be the lower class. So the numbers are a benefit. If we don't have, uh, we don't have to have 10 billion white people versus 1 billion black people. If there are 100 billion black people and, and, and 50 million white people, we can still survive. We can still thrive and be well. It's just a misconception that you need numbers. They didn't have institutional power. No one has institutional power. That's just an abstract word. It doesn't really mean anything, you know? You mean you don't have the intelligence, or Demographics still matter. Vitality springs from youth. The decline in birth rates in Europe is entirely artificial. It's simply since 1990, they started giving Western women the pill that keeps them infertile and contraception and so on that, that Europeans all use, that stuff. You know, and of course, one real reason why birth rates are still low is simply housing. And like I said, you, we don't have to accept this. We can simply find any territory where we can start over, a territory we can defend, and then we'll thrive there. There is nothing wrong with the European fertility. There's something wrong with the fact that we think we need to hold on to a dying civilization. We don't need to do that. We can let go of this, you know, and wake up. Yeah. What advice would you give to black folks who want to defeat puppet leaders backed by Western powers? I don't think they are backed by Western powers. They are simply bribed. They're just bribed. They just give them a lot of money and that's it, really. I mean, in Nigeria, you have 220 million people. That's more than enough to overthrow your leadership. You know, you can do whatever you want there. The housing market works like contraception. Exactly, exactly. That's a very good point. Yeah. So because in the Netherlands, for example, you know, native white women have a very hard time of acquiring a house to live in. They can't start having children or they'd have to have them in the attic of their parents' house or something. You know? Now, although I suppose you could do that, it's just not the quality of life that we have. So we're, we're being purged out. Uh, in this way. And that's why I say we don't have to stay part of a system that doesn't serve us anymore. We can just cut loose, break loose, deny that, say, the Dutch government has authority over us. Like, it's no longer legitimate. Western governments are extremely abusive. They, they don't support their own people, and that means we have every right to start supporting ourselves. You know, why would you stay in a relationship that is clearly abusive, like physically and mentally abusive? You cut loose, you get out of there. You know, you don't want, you don't have to be a part of this anymore, you know? Yeah, Our houses are too small for uh, large families, that's also true, yeah. Doesn't the government kind of own you, though? How? Governments don't own us. This just all of that is just it's just your convictions, I think, your mental convictions, yeah. The black race can be happy in Africa and Europe and America can be for the white peoples, yeah, clearly. Because in the north it's colder and nothing grows in winter, and that's why we had to evolve to be smarter. Yeah, whatever the reasons for IQ differences are, they are simply there. It's just how it is. You know, uh, if you come with a hunter-gatherer intelligence with an IQ below 60, you just won't be a lawyer. They can give you diplomas all they want, but you won't be a lawyer. You won't be a surgeon. You won't be, you won't be a leader of, a, of an intelligent civilization. You know? What's a big move that you think white women should do to challenge today's issues? Uh, big move, right? To challenge today's issues. Um, yeah, you know what? What's going on with women anyway? It's really the brainwashing, the propaganda they get from their women's websites and women's magazines. And so they're, they need to start recognizing that, you know, I think women in general don't like conflict, but you might want, you might want to start a conflict with the people who are clearly lying to you about the benefits of feminism and so on. You know, you know, you, they always say that men shouldn't tell women what to do, but at some point, men should maybe point out, hey, um, you're being deceived. 
you're being lied to and you need to wake up from that because you, you can't can't keep keep going like this i think that is maybe our first point of interest yeah start making uh european type women aware that the propaganda they watch on the social media and the, and the women's uh media sphere is really a lie they're lying to you if, if you would only see that they're that they're lying to you, you know men are not oppressive evil monsters who just want to chain women you know people who say that thing are usually these these leftist beta male feminist helpers but you believe that no i don't you can't you know <laughs> stop using makeup i don't know if it's too much it's clearly too much that's true but anyway uh, yeah it's everywhere the propaganda and all the movies the commercials right like i think they're trying to make white women believe that they need to go with diversity that this is the future this is what, what what everybody wants but it's not you know you gotta wake up from this I and mean, of course it's also our job to help people wake up you know do you believe in life after death i have no idea what will happen after death but i'm not afraid of it so we'll see they like to feel that they are in, independent like women like to feel in the independent but they they almost never are yeah that's probably true so many women today the career women they are totally dependent on their jobs right on their employers because you need two incomes for a house anyway and even if you're a single woman you you need a full-time job yeah fake independence a smart woman gets her baby on time <laughs> yeah why can't white people have their own neighborhoods? Yeah, we can. We just have to do it. You know. What do I think of the Ukraine war? I did a whole video about that yesterday. It's on my YouTube at the Great Johannes. Here, let me show you my uh, my YouTube uh, username here. This one at the Great Johannes. Uh, and I think what is going to happen is the Western powers they want to keep pushing for war against Russia. They see Russia as a threat that might invade all of Europe to take the market away from the U.S. That will be the end of the USA. You know, I if only Europeans would find the leadership to assert themselves more, then we could take the lead in Europe. Russia will be no threat to us, but we will also become more powerful than the USA in that scenario. Are you a fan of Star Wars? No, I did like the original theory, but I'm not a fan of it, you know. Fun. <laughs> all right, all right. So for those of you joining, I do regular uh, regular streams nowadays, almost almost every day, if I can do them. Uh, I stream on TikTok, and you can, uh, you can also go to my Substack, my newsletter, jmk.info. I send out maybe something once a week or so uh, just to keep uh, pushing my thoughts out. Oh, I started 45 minutes ago. Yeah, I don't have a fixed time when I start, usually usually around 7 or 8 p.m. or so uh, in my time zone. So I started three, yeah, 40, 43 minutes ago. Uh, you can also check my Telegram at JohannesMK. So there was a fake account uh, ending in the 2.0 and people are sometimes there's there are these scammers who impersonate me they up they re-upload my videos to their own channel and then uh, they start talking to my followers uh, about bitcoin and financial stuff and that's uh, that wasn't me yeah don't worry i'll be i'll be here every every day you know i think Dutch sounds like American English with different words <laughs> in terms of pronunciation maybe maybe kind of, I don't know I don't know about that yeah yeah don't buy a house that is too expensive you'll be you'll become a mortgage slave yeah that's every every the mortgage slavery uh uh you know in the western world you, you most people can't afford to buy a home cash so you have to work for it you're always a slave or a slave of the rent here yeah. and the more the more money you take on the more stressed your work life will be yeah. that's definitely how it is you know when you buy a house the government can still take it from you yeah probably if you don't pay up 
Yeah, sure. That's true. Yeah, don't work too much. Then. Uh, let's see if I can uh, come up with something to talk to talk about here on uh, Zero Hedge. Yeah, people are calling Trump a dictator. I think that's a bit nonsense. Donald Trump, you know, I liked him in 2016. Of course, he was the better candidate. You know, he's getting a bit old, of course. But, you know, it's uh, to call Trump a, dicta Trump a dictator. You want to get him off, get him off the election roster so you can't even vote for him. That doesn't sound like the U.S. is a democracy anymore, is it? They're trying to come up, cook up with so many, so many nonsensical lies and reasons to... Uh, to keep Trump out of office, but then you're not a real democracy, right? You're just not a real democracy. Elon Musk tells Italy, please don't, please don't import the woke mind virus from America. No. Yeah, but we already did. Europe is just as woke, in, in many ways, even worse than the USA, you know? People are going crazy. It's it's all these weird urban people which is going nuts. Like I saw a video today of a man arguing that if a man pretends to be a woman, he's a real woman and he should be able to participate in women's sports. No, of course not, you know. That's just so nonsense, you know. Do you have any thoughts about Geert Wilders? Yeah, he's probably a controlled opposition Zionist. I don't think he's going to do anything for us. So, which side are you on, Israel and Palestine? What's what's what makes you think? What's ma what makes you think you have to pick a side? I am not on any of these sides. I'm on the side of Europe. You know, if these people cause us trouble, we just nuke them, be gone with them. You know. So I've been. Someone's been applying for jobs in the EU, but I get told I need a job to get a visa, but I need a visa to get a job. <laughs> yeah, that's difficult. Sounds like you're applying in Germany or, or the Netherlands. That's why we all we're doing, we do things like that. Yeah. In the Netherlands, you need, a, you need a bank account to get a job, but you need a job you know, to open a bank account. You know, or, you need, or you need like, a, uh, you know, if you want to rent something, you need a job to rent, right? You need a job to pay rent, but the people who rent you, they demand you to have a job first. And if you don't, you know, anyway, <laughs> uh, it's a bit confusing. Yeah. yeah, both parties are dictators if they take bribes on the same people. Yeah. Can you recommend me a book? Yeah, Revival of the West. I don't know about Elon Musk. Is Elon Musk on our side? I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm I'm on the side of Europe, you know. All right, let's see. I was looking on Zero Hedge if there was something to do here. <laughs> Rewarding obesity. Southwest Airlines is giving free second seats to customers of size. Well, I suppose if 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 the if the plane isn't full, otherwise you're just going to lose money to fat people, you know. Hey, I honestly couldn't care less how air airliners decide to deal with fat people. You know, you want to you want to give them a free seat and give them a free seat, you know, what do I care, you know? It's not a big issue, is it? It's just that on the other hand, when, you know, people start making demands on the basis of their own defects, that's that's really problematic. We can't do that either. You know. I, there's only one thing that I can't talk about on the whole TikTok, uh, not even on live, uh, because I want to repost this stream to my YouTube channel. And it's that uh, the Jibby Jab, the Jibby Jab program. You know what I mean, right? Where you get these uh, little iron needles in your arm. That's that's odd. That that's the one thing I can't talk talk about, or my video will be uh, taken down from the YouTube. <laughs> I think the United States, yeah, they're least they're losing credibility, right? Right. You know, people who say, "Are you pro-life or are you pro-choice?" You know, first of all, pro-choice is a nonsense. 
nonsense really a lot of women are having abortions simply because they can't afford the child so what choice is that they didn't have a choice but then again you know uh the problem with the whole abortion is if you say you want to ban abortions then what about uh white women getting raped you want them to give birth to a black half black child why you know i don't want that so there should always be room for abortion to get rid of unwanted effects of uh, of crime and uh, you know and so on and so forth you know yeah someone wants to meet me in person okay well People are boycotting Harvard because the president of Harvard is a, is a con artist, right? Joe Harris, why do you think there will be a war between Africa and Europe if Africa has no leadership? There will be a war because it doesn't matter about the leadership. There will be a war because the African people are coming to Europe. In, in the end, there will be so many of them, tens of millions soon, uh, and they're going to go to war. You know, They're extremely violent and rapey. There, so there will be war. What do you expect? You know, there's just going to be war. My my idea is that countries like Nigeria have the potential in the next 50 years to develop uh, an army of their own, an army capable of competing with European nations, and then there will obviously be a war, because the Nigerian people, the African people, they are so full of hate, so full of anger, they're going to go to war with Europe, and we in Europe will have to prepare for it. It's not up to us. I don't wear brands. I try to avoid buying branded clothing. I just buy clothing. I prefer brand less clothing. <laughs> I don't like it if the label shows or something, you know. It says, oh, this is the label. You know, it's not for me. All right. All right, I've been talking about 50 minutes or so. I'll be back tomorrow again. I will do uh, streams like this almost every day. So if you want to talk more tomorrow, uh, tomorrow is Sunday, right? No, th that's fine then. And then uh, uh, see you then.